Before we get started tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to plug our sponsor here, IE Sports Radio. Another app company is a app, is a company that builds out for others that we love and share all the time on the internet. With apps like Me Me, BS Meaner, and Face Five, you can enjoy all the fruits and loves of those lovely things on that site. You can find them online at neveractcompany.com. You can find it in Google Play or coming soon to Apple App Store. But that's neveractcompany.com. Like I said, you can find it in the Google Play Store soon. It's coming to the Apple Play Store, uh, Apple uh, App Store. I know as Android people feel very happy that we get things first compared to the Apple people. But now to the intro. So, not just James Harden, I mean, Russell Westbrook, that one's out of Houston. It may be that James Harden may be one out too, just because. We'll discuss that and more here on Fast Break, here on I Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And join us as you shout tonight. We're going to just hop into it because we got a lot of stuff to talk to y'all tonight. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of news still coming up on that. But first, D-Lock, how you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing good, man. Um, nice little day or weekend of sports. Um, basketball, even though the season is over, all season has taken over. and We're seeing a lot of uh, crazy stuff already in the news, so uh, not surprised. What about you, man? The weekend's good. Um, you know, um, you know this. Well, this past Thursday, uh, my cousin, you know, he made varsity this year here at the local high school here at Athens, Alabama, and you know, he got to start and everything like that. Man, you know, he played very well. You know, granted they lost that game, but he played very well. He was one one hitting stuff consistently, and then, then you know how it goes sometimes, man. You got some dude trying to play hero ball out there, and they lose by one point. So, you know. Yeah, that's gonna happen. You're always gonna have somebody that's gonna do that. I say, try to be that way. Like, come on, dog. You missing like ten layups in the lane, man. Kick the ball out to him, man. I'm mad driving home. But anyways, but that's another discussion every day. We got a lot of stuff to talk talk about tonight, D Lock. And I guess we'll just start off with the the Houston boys. Russell Westbrook and James Harden. 
Reports had come out that Russell Westbrook wants out. According to one Stephen A. Smith, you know, he doesn't feel like him and James Harden didn't want to, can't really play together, I guess, in that, in the divestment of their careers. Now, it seems like reports, before we even got on the show tonight, it seems like James Harden is trying to, I don't know why I say push his way to Brooklyn, but he, he wants to go there. D-Lock. We can go with Russell Westbrook first. Where do you, where can you see him ending up ended up at? And should Houston make a move to do anything with him? Well, I don't think it's a bad idea for him to move somewhere else. Um, to start off, I think the reason why these teams are really ready to go somewhere else is because the fact is the head coach and the general manager is gone. So, um, you know, you're going to have a whole, you got a whole new staff now. Um, and they don't know what the plan is with the organization. So this is when it really becomes more business. Uh, so, you know, this was what worked out. One year, was it just last year we were seeing Russ smiling, you know, picking up his, holding his jersey up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Tony, you know, so we're expecting so much uh, greatness coming ahead. And it didn't last that long. So, um, to be honest, uh, this is not a shocker to me, too. It's kind of a shocker, but not really. It's a shocker, but it's not really a shocker after seeing general manager and the coach, you know, be replaced. So, uh, but for me, um, it's going to be very interesting to see where Russ lands. Russ is a player that is a one-man, one-man stand, one-man band type. What I mean by that is, it's like he's the, he's the player on the team. He does damn near everything for the team. So, you know, you pairing him with somebody is not going to be as effective as if he had his own squad. Um, now, the perfect team, to me, would sound like the New York Knicks. Um, that would be a squad where, you know, he can do basically anything he wants. Grab one assist, you know, points, score at a will. Got a couple guys over there, but, you know, he can, I'm pretty sure they will ship uh, the Rockets a nice little package to get Russ uh, I think he would sit in, you know, maybe that's a good area for him, a good place for him. Um, but to me, uh, there, also another team that may sound a little bit biased is that the Magic do try to make a push to grab him. Because, I mean, right now you are in the state of Florida and you haven't really done too much. Um, right now, in order to try to get more players to come, to uh, Orlando, I think it would be a great push. If Russ would be a person that you can definitely sell to at least have some kind of, not necessarily other big time players, but just a good group, a good roster around him. Um, now, obviously, like I said, the Rockets will ask for a handful to let go of Russ and the other player that we're going to talk about named James Harden. Um, so to me, uh, those are the. Those, I do see the Knicks making a big move. Um, I don't think the Philadelphia 76 want anything to do with him. Uh, I just, right now, it seemed like this would be the perfect spot as far as getting them back on t- on task and try to get them to start, you know, winning more games and getting them in the right direction. But uh, I would definitely like to see the Magic kind of make a push uh, to grab a play with that caliber. Man, ah, you know, the Knicks, they sound really desperate to get somebody this offseason. Uh, there's been rumors that they're interested in Chris Paul. But, you know, he's like mid-30s. Russ is like around our age, early 30s or so. So if you had to choose which one you would go with, you know, you would take the the younger guy. But, you know, and plus, you know, you mentioned about, you know, Russ being a one-man show, you know, with Thibodeau there and how much, you know, he plays guys, you know, full minutes and stuff each game. That could be like a great scenario for him. You know, 
you shared me an article that, you know, the Hornets may have an interest in him. You know, could they cash, yeah. cash some of those chips in, you know, or pass lottery picks and maybe, you know, throw in Terry Rozier and Nicholas Batum and his salary? Maybe throw in a young prospect and maybe, Oscar what? And maybe, uh, what pick could they pick in? Number three? Maybe if you can between that, or maybe a, a future pick after that for yeah. Westbrook. Because if you're yeah. if you're Houston D Lock, if you go this route, and we get to the other individual here in a second, if you're going like go for like a full rebuild, shed salary and stuff like that, and get future draft assets. That may be your best way to go. If you can squeeze that number three pick from um, Charlotte, you got to take that all day, every day. Yeah, even the Knicks, you know, them picking number, um, was it eight, I believe? If you could squeeze that eighth pick out of them, Because, you know, who knows who they're going to pick at that, at that stage of the draft. That would be awesome. So, hey, y'all, y'all, we know y'all desperate. Here, give it the eighth pick. You know, we'll take half Barbie Powers uh, accept this option. Reggie Bullock, you know, Way Ellington. Throw us like a, a young prospect like Kevin Knox. And we're good. Here, oh, we'll give y'all Eric Gordon too, potentially. I would. Yeah. I mean, most of the time with that, with, with this, I mean, you know, Jordan is looking for that. I think we talked about it a couple of weeks before. Jordan is looking for that star um, for Charlotte. And he could be the guy. As well, so Charlotte would be a bad, you know, a bad option either. But the thing is, do they pull the trigger? I mean, Russ, in, he's sponsored by Jordan too, right? I'm almost positive he is. Yeah, he is. Right. Yeah, that's the, you know, that's definitely the, the guy that you can go with. But do they uh, pull that trigger? That's the, that's the, you know, that's the trick to it. And I, I, I would think that. um Jordan has to really consider it, or uh, I guess this can lead into the next player is maybe he tried to pull a trick on on, on James Harden. I think you gotta give him more assets if assets if you train for James Harden. Yeah, I think with you know, and we discussed this before. I think with Harden. You get more consistency out of him compared to a Russ. I think if if you fuse James Harden and Russell Westbrook together, like if you take Russ's drive, determination, you know, or, you know, real, you know, you know, drive like his body is stolen and stuff type of style in his play. Combine that with James Harden shooting and scoring and stuff like that and efficiency, you get the damn near perfect player right there, guard wise. But, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, if you're going to trade for a James Harden, you, you got to give us some assets. If you're a Charlotte, you got to give, give us some assets there. Well, which one would you rather have if you had to pick between Russ and Hart? Because it seems like it seems like both are available now, if we're being honest. And when we like I said, we'll talk about Hart, but it seems like both are uh, they're available. And I probably should have asked this question after we went over Hart, but which one would you rather have? Well, mm, that's tough. I guess Harden, just because, you know, 
he has taken my team better places than compared to Russ. I, I seen, you know, okay, I seen what this guy done with this team by himself and some very solid role players. And I seen what this guy done, you know, with the same type of role players, but really hadn't done much with them. And Barry's make, making the playoffs and stuff. But the other guy in Harden, I know when I get him. Efficient scoring and whatnot. You know, can be a good passer. Compared to this other guy that, you know, allegedly, you know, trying to pass his stats at times. But, you know, if I had to go one, I go with James Harden. If I can get the right assets and stuff like that, don't have to get much too much draft capital. Then I go with James Harden. Yeah, I mean, James Harden is younger, right? I think he's like twenty eight. Ooh, no, I don't. I don't think he's so. He's not that young, is he? I want to say. Maybe like 29, maybe 20. He got, no, he's younger. He's younger, bro. He got to be 20. Got to be 20, 29, maybe 28. No, he's 31. Yep. Oh, wow. Time is flying. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I definitely wasn't expecting that. But I, I probably, if I had to pick and choose, yeah, obviously I would go James Harden. Um, because I know he's going to take the shot, but I possibly can put players around him. Um, I don't see the same with Russ. I think his energy is just a little different. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, but again, you know, like you said, original question, um, I think a couple of teams are going to be interested to get Russ. I mean, especially the teams that are like at the bottom of the barrel, you know, like, you, you know, you have teams that are trying to Charlotte, New York, those are teams that, are trying to get like a what's the word? They're trying to get a a raise and play it. Like they're trying to get their team back noticeable, right? Yep. Um, the Cavs probably wouldn't be bad if you wanted to if you wanted to grab some. I already said Orlando would be would be pretty solid. Um, who knows what Wizards are doing with John Wall and Bradley Beal? Um, I. Those are the those are the teams that I'm really looking at. Um, to be honest, I give you a dart throw. Maybe, well, nah, maybe the Pistons. Uh, I can't. Uh, the Pistons, I can't see. I mean, they probably gonna look to get rid of Blake Griffin and do a complete rebuild. If they get rid of him. Then they they had a full rebuild right there in up in Detroit. You know, you yeah. you you brought up Orlando. What if they offer try to match up salaries and stuff? What if they offer a Terrence Ross, Markel Fultz? Hmm. You still want to keep the Mo Mo um Mo, uh, Mo Baba. You may be throwing another salary in there and a second round pick for Westbrook. Would you go for that? I probably would. Um honestly, I probably would try to I ain't gonna lie, I probably would try to keep Mo Bamba and probably send Booch. <laughs> Just because Older, um, I I see why you would say keep him. I just very tough for me to pick and choose between those two because I think Magic kind of hurt themselves and shot themselves in the foot drafting Obama. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that tree at all. I just know like you're you are. That'd be the perfect place for him, and then you know you have a chance to actually start winning more games with with Russ. But I'm pretty sure players like Folks would be somebody that they want. Forty years not on contract right now, I think, but they're trying. They probably try to resign him. 
Yeah, I'm looking at the salary right now. Um, Fournier is uh, he got a player option for uh, this upcoming year for 17 million, which I I think he accepts. Maybe, I don't, of course. I, I think he should. If not, I think he's really silly. But if if the Orlando Magic wants to bite, and then you know that'd be my package. Reason why I may say get rid of Mobamba because you still got like at least a decent veteran core. You know, Vucevic can shoot from the outside. We don't know if Mobamba can stretch his game out like that. And, you know, Russ and Vucevic and that pick and roll and stuff like that. You know, Russ driving the building and stuff like that. And Vucevic pop, pick and pop, pop, top of style. I think that could work with, with Orlando. And not ain't that, you know, okay, you pick and pop with and stuff like that, and pick and roll on that stuff. If you, you don't get the shot right there in the, in the initial pick and roll, you can find, you know, Eric Gordon on the flash or in the corner, in my opinion, if I was running the offense like that. Okay, the pick and roll is not there between you and Russ. Hey, Aaron, make sure you, you slide down, catch your opponent off guard. You're going for the alley for a dunk or so. Or your V-cut trying to get yourself open that way for a jump shot. So I could I could see Russ and Orlando. You know. Yeah. I mean I just just you know, the thought process is you it's not a bad move. Um and I think that's where he can kind of just, you know, have the offense both to him and play how he plays. It's just Dude, you know how it works, man. The Magic don't want to do anything like that. It would be really really shocking if if I see that they were one of the teams interested in him or James Hart. Um, I just, I guess that's me talking on the fan aspect and also thinking, well, yeah, this 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 wouldn't be a bad team for him to go to because, you know, you need, uh, he could definitely help moving forward and be that big name that the Magic need because, Booch is, you know, solid, but he's no Russ, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but or James Hart for that matter. Uh, but why not try to pull that? Now it seems like on James, other James on the other hand is trying to go to like a team, uh, you know, put together a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, there's rumors abound that. Ladies and gentlemen, that he may want to go to the Nets. You know, it seems like the Nets are like a hot destination for some of these guys. Like we talked about Paul George like a couple weeks ago. You know, if he gets traded, he wanna go to the Nets and stuff like that. We we tweeted out from the uh fast break account. And if you ain't following us on there, please do on Twitter. But we tweeted out and saying if if a trade that would happen to Brooklyn for James Harden, you got to come off Carries Levert. I think, you know, you send Spence and Dan Willie. Give up Jared Allen in a first round pick just for James Harden. You think that's fair? Say it again. Uh, if James Harden gets traded to Brooklyn, you send, okay. uh, the, the Nets will send back Carries Levert. Spencer and Dan Willie, Jerry Allen in a uh, first round pick. Maybe this this uh, this year's pick, and maybe a future one for James Harden. Do you think that'd be I fair, would, there? I wouldn't do it if I was Brooklyn. I'm sorry. I well, maybe I say that because I like I like um, I like the group that Brooklyn has with Dan Willie, Levert, and Jared Allen. Um, I, I, boy, I mean, you could, because you have him, Kyrie, Kevin Durant. You have, ah, boy. I mean, I, that's a hard decision, man. Because 
I mean, it is James Harden, but dang, to give up, you know, a pretty much a solid roster because you're going to have Karis LeVert and Ben with you as your rotating guards, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Jared Allen is going to be a center. He can rotate. DeAndre Jordan is probably good for a certain amount of minutes a game. But it's not a, it's not a bad move for Houston at all. Uh, but if I'm Brooklyn, I tell you what, I, it's not a bad move for Brooklyn either. And the reason why is because that would basically be them proving that they're all in. You know, they're trying to win right now. Um, they have they have what three of the top, I would say top fifteen players, top ten, top fifteen players in the league. Yep. I mean, Kyrie, would you consider Kyrie to be top ten, or would you put him in the top fifteen range? Because you have Kyrie, Kevin Durant, and James Harden. That's you know hard for anybody to to plan against. So, I. Not a bad move, but it's also about some of the players that they would have to replace. They would have that would have to replace, you know, Ben Whitty coming off the bench or Kareth Burke coming off the bench. Me personally, if I was running Brooklyn, I'd be trying to get rid of what find a way to get rid of DeAndre Horton. I mean, DeAndre, DeAndre Horton, DeAndre Jordan, because he, you know, he really didn't do nothing for me. And I don't know if we discussed this now. I always thought that signing was strange because you got the same type of player in Jared Allen, but he's younger. You know, so I was like, okay, you signed DeAndre Jordan for all this money, but you already got the same type of player in him in Jared Allen. Don't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Don't make a lot of sense. If I'm Houston, okay, I'm not taking that older player when I had a cheaper option right here. And plus, he's younger. So that's where, you know, Jerry Allen comes into play, you know, in trade talks. Hey, he's a younger guy. I, I'm going to ask for him. You know, carries the vert. You know, it's great that he's healthy now, but he has had injury issues the past couple years. And this season, he was, I mean, before, you know, things got shut down, he's he's slowly getting back into form, coming back from another injury. You know, with James Harden, you know, I don't think he has missed too many games for the past few years. And you need, and you need somebody else dependable in that backcourt because Kyrie, you know, hasn't been that much, that, that durable guy that you wanted for the past few couple of seasons. We've seen it with Boston and we've seen that Brooklyn this past year. He hasn't been too healthy. He hasn't been real too healthy in his career either in the NBA. So if you're Brooklyn, if you can get James Harden, throwing those players, you know, maybe take in the club auction for uh, Gary Temple and throw that money in there. If do you need more salary? I say pull that trigger. Won't hurt. Then maybe bring back the guys you signed on cheap deals for the, the like for the bubble, like Jamal Crawford, Dante Hall, and others, and Michael Beasley. And there you go. Yeah, I mean I forgot about some of the players they did pick up. Uh, Beasley and, and, and Crawford, but getting James Harden would put them on a totally different level. Um, didn't they hire Dan Tony as an assistant coach? Yeah, so this is going to be that same kind of offer that he was in Houston. Um, and that's probably why he wants to go with it. Yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah. I yeah. Not a bad move, but if they pull this, I wonder what happens to Kyrie. That's the question that I have. I don't think nothing happens. I mean I mean we know Kyrie can be his, his own person. 
But I think well he should well he should be down for this move. If you're the next management and GM Sean Marks, you gotta look at it like this. Like, okay, I knew the risk sign this dude. I knew and you gotta know this dude's injury history. If I can get this other guy who's very durable and can get me 25 a game, along with this other guy that can give me 20 plus and Durant. If Steve Nash, we're just talking, you know, hypothetical people. Hop, this case, this just trade, you know, if this trade gets true, go through hypothetically. Steve Nash got to get Kyrie to be like Steve Nash in Phoenix. I mean, to a degree, maybe like Steve Nash in Dallas. Because, you know, Dirk was the man. Then you had Michael Finley as that number two guy. Mm-hmm. Steve Nash as that number three option. If he can get kind of sell Kyrie to be that number three option, okay, if you give us between 15 and 19 per night, at least nine to 11 assists tonight uh, through, through the season, I think we'll be gravy. Don't you, do you agree with that? Yeah, um, but I just the thing with ah, the thing with Kyrie is we know how he acts when he's not the focal point, or from what we've seen in the past. So do we see the same thing with him moving forward with just Kevin Durant? And they mess around to add James Harden. Like I don't even see I don't even see Kevin I don't even see Kyrie being the second option to be honest. Oh no, he's not. <laughs> If, if if they add James Hart, we push him, I'm pushing him down to third option. Like, oh. there's no question in my mind. Oh, he would have to be. But the, the problem is, how does he how does he react towards that? Because even the fact that he was a boss in the place that he wanted, um, I think Brad Stevenson was saying there were days where you wouldn't even talk, this guy wouldn't even talk to you. Like, it would be, you know, a week when he wouldn't have no kind of conversation about a lot of different things. Like, I don't know. Like, and that's with, you know, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, right? I'm not saying they're terrible players, but I don't think they're comparison comparable to Durant and James Harden at the moment. Mm-hmm. So, for me, I just, I, I would love to see that intro, that, that how that un- unravels, and you know Kevin Durant and I think Kyrie hit, do a lot of talking, you know. So we'll definitely you know find that out I think before the season. But I wouldn't be opposed to the move. It just to give up so much. I think Dennis Dinwiddie is a pretty solid player. Um, I think Kevin Durant and the bubble show how good of a player he can be. So it just you know. It depends, but to go all in, you're knowing that okay, who are you gonna talk? Who are you? Who are you gonna really run into in the East? You're gonna run into the Heat. Um, you're gonna run into my run into Milwaukee. Uh, the Pacers. Uh, we still gotta talk about Oga Depot. Um, you might run into, may run into them, but you're really not having a team that's just all the way out there. Um, mm-hmm. so. I think if they do get James Harden, this is like a, you know, NBA Finals or bust move if they do that. Yeah. To wrap this up, I mean, you know, for Houston, and we talked about, you know, our man Tillman, uh, Philman, uh, Tillman uh, Fertitta before, and his pockets hurting during this pandemic. You know, for him, I know he wants to win now. But if there's a way you can shed salary and stuff like that and go through the rebuild for a couple years, you know, you can save money that way. And, you know, reevaluate things to go that route. You know, if you're Steven Silas, real quick, D-Lock, and, you know, 
you came to the tensions of coaching James Harden and Russell Westbrook. How would you feel, you know, both these guys wanting out and you just getting there into the fold? Um, <sighs> it's tough. It's tough because, yeah, because the fact is, like, I can't, I can't be mad at them for wanting to, you know, go somewhere else. But also, I can be say, I can say, well, you know what, you guys can at least, maybe they, I don't know if they had a discussion with them, but um, see what the plan is that the coach has for them, you know. But also, they both know what kind of players they are. You know, they know that they are a on-ball player that really needs the ball more so. They knew that that was only going to work with Mike D'Antoni, to be honest. Um, I don't think that works. I don't think you have a coach that's going to say, okay, well, Russ, you handle the ball for one half, and then James Harden handled the ball for the other half. So I kind of can see why one of them wants to push out um, honestly, I'm thinking James Harden was seeing the fact that Dan Tony went over to Brooklyn. He probably talked to Dan Tony, and they're probably coming up with this nice plan. You know that Daryl Morey's not, not there. He, he, his future is in question there. So, you know, with the coach, you know, now he just wants to you know, start over. Um, and it's not even the fact they one don't want to leave because the other one is staying, because clearly both of them are saying they don't mind leaving. So, um, but I think the big three thing uh, to James Harden is what is clicking in the back of his mind. And, um, you know, him talk, I said, Dan, Tony, Steve Nash, think about it. Like, your whole offense that was given to you or that you that you ran last year or for the past couple of years, you have, you have him, the guy that ran that offense, and also the guy that won the MVP under him in that offense, and Steve Nash is the coach. So it's kind of like a match made in heaven type thing. So obviously, you know, if he said, well, hey, you know what? Like, this would be the perfect spot. It would make sense um, for him to want to go there. Uh, and also, I think that it probably fits well for Kevin Durant as well. I mean, Kevin Durant was kind of with the main guy, kind of at Golden State, but he wasn't the on-ball player. You know, you know Steph kind of handled that. So if James Harden was there, you know, with Kyrie, we kind of put KD in a spot where, okay, y'all need me to drop 30 and have 15 this night? No problem. But, hey, y'all don't need me this night. Y'all could do X, Y, and Z. All right, cool. Um, but I do I do think that it's going to probably bother the coach, but at the same time, uh, it is his team. So maybe he gets the chance to start over. I mean, I think I said this when we figured out that Dan Tony wasn't coming back, that a player or a coach is going to want to have his own roster. He's not going to want to run that offense or that those two and just say, well, I'm just going to let you kind of freestyle throughout the throughout the game every night. So um, he wants his own, you know, he probably wants his own kind of bill. And it also goes with uh, possibly losing one or both of them. And he, he understands that as well, I think, taking that job. Yeah, and, you know, we'll wrap this up. You know, if the Rockets unload both of these guys and then, you know, Steven Silas gets, like, a job that he can rebuild with in his own eyes, you know, Steven Silas that has grinded for years during the NBA in various different spots, and now, you know, he gets to be in a situation that, okay, if I'm not able to coach these guys, then, you know, I do the rebuild of my own eyes. You know, my only thing is, like, hopefully, you know, Fertitta gives him that patience to rebuild his roster if, you know, like I said, both of these guys are traded and gone. But, you know, either way you look at it, I think Steven Silas would be good. I think he knows you know, he recognized game and stuff like that. He knows what's up. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, ladies and gentlemen, what happens. No news has come yet in terms of trade. And all trades, you know, become official tomorrow. So we'll see how things shake out and stuff like that. 
transition to the NBA draft. NBA draft is this Wednesday. Uh, I believe uh, six uh, Eastern time starting. I believe. D lock. What's what studs do you see succeeding in the NBA level? And, um, go ahead. And I'll ask the second part when you get done with that. Uh, there's 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 a couple of them. I think that one thing we, that we know about this draft or NBA draft is it's not it's not it's not the same as the NFL draft where there are seven rounds and you get to pick all these different type of players. There's only two rounds, right? Um, and you have to make the best of the two picks that you have. So um, I think that there's going to be a couple, couple, pretty much some good players that we're going to see in the first round. You might see a couple steals uh, late, but I think the top guys at the at the at the guys that are up at the top are going to be the ones that could be um, the ones that can gravitate and be some studs like, you know, the metal, obviously. I mean, we've heard from his dad this whole time that he's better than his brother, Lonzo. Um, he's been saying that for Lonzo years. So Go ahead. And he's been saying that for years. Yeah, he's been saying, that's exactly, he's been saying that for years, but um, I don't think it was just his talking up that got his son to be, you know, the, the projected number one pick overall. So uh, he's here now, you know, so I, I think that he's going to be better than what Ben. I think he's going to be one of the studs now. Um, like I said, Bonzo is still coming to his own. And I, I give LaMelo a similar, uh, you know, like move up. But I think that LaMelo is going to move into a better situation than Bonzo, in my opinion. Um, I think that going to L.A. and being the guy when you get there, uh, one of the main guys was a lot more pressure. On Lonzo, I don't think that that happens in Minnesota or Golden State. You know these other spots. So um, for me, I think he's going to be one of the studs. Obviously, um, Anthony Edwards is going to be Anthony Edwards. I like him ever since I've seen him at Georgia. Um, seen a lot of a lot of the things that he has, you know, he has done and what he can he can do. Um, one guy I do think that's going to be pretty solid is Tyrese Helbert. Um, at Iowa, Iowa State, I think he's one guy that not many people are talking about because of so many guards that are ahead of him and other people are talking about him. Um, I think he's going to be somebody to watch out for. Um, he's not really like, he's very versatile too. Um, he's not like a Melo or Lonzo 6'7", you know, but I think he can play damn near any spot. Um, I really like uh, Obi Top. O- Obi Top. Um, I think that you know that forward position can stretch out in so many ways, and for him to be you know about six nine, he can play. Pretty sure they can stretch him to being uh, the three of the four, or actually, actually, the four. yeah, three of the four. Uh, I could possibly see him maybe playing a five at, with a team that plays small ball, so maybe like. A Houston Rockets type <laughs> with the Russ and the, the Harden combination type offense, but um, I really like him, um, and I think that he's going to be one person that could do damage. Now, with these studs, or possibly could be studs, what affects that to me still is where some of these you know kids land. Um, some of these franchises, you know, they have the chance to put these players in the best position, but some of them don't do that. The franchises, like I do think that them being studs do play a part in uh, where they land as well, or they're silly. Uh, we do see Trey Young going crazy in Atlanta, um, but his type of play kind of fits, you know, the league right now. So it, no matter where he would have went at, but let's be real. Do we see him, doing as well as he is now in Dallas? Does he fit, you know, in that Dallas type of, you know, play? No, I don't think so. I think he fits. I think he is where he's supposed to be. Um, I think that trade was done for the right reasons, and it benefited both teams. 
I don't think if I don't think if that trade doesn't happen, we may see two different play caliber players. Uh, so I do think it is where these kids land. But a couple of guys I said I think is going to be a couple of studs. Um, one guy still a little bit is Devin Vassell. I'm kind of still on the edge with him right now. Have to watch a little bit more of his tape. Um, I think he can be pretty solid as well. But I just it depends on also, you know, where he is he is landed as well. So I see a couple of studs, man, early in the draft. Ooh, for me, it's I don't know. It's who can stick out because it seems like Air, you can make a case like who can be good or whatnot. So it's just like it's it's tough where to say who's the studs and whatnot. You know, a lot of unacl- like learner freshmen, sophomore guys coming out this year. You know, which is the norm, but you know, but it's really hard to gauge to like studs and whatnot. You know, stuff for me and a guy that's kind of you know rising in draft boards is a Kyra Lewis out of Alabama. You know, I may be biased a little bit, but you know, I watched this kid since you know his freshman year of high school. You know. Out, you know, Hayes Green, Alabama, and he really stuck out to me. You know, all those years ago, and to now, he has got that. You know, that varying coaching from Avery Johnson, that's been in the league and whatnot. Now, you know, this past year, coaching from Nate Oates that plays a very, very high tempo style ball. So if you combine those things right there, and plus his age, being 19 years old, can go a very long way. You know, he got built, built up his frame and whatnot, but I think he can be a long way to go. LaMelo Ball, you brought him up. A guy that, you know, can shoot, probably the best shooter out of the ball, all the ball brothers. Has a better release than Lonzo. You know, can play off guard or point guard. And so, my only thing for him that he's got to be in the right, he's got to be in the right situation or team that has a great structure and don't let, the, you know, I'm not saying his dad going to do something, come, come in and do acting crazy, but, you know, don't let think get things in his head and have him be the, the main guy from the jump. You don't want that kind of pressure on him that early, in my opinion. Like a place like a Golden State would be perfect for him, but I don't see the need for him to go there, in my opinion. Right. You know, you mentioned Anthony, you know, Anthony Edwards. I think he's going to be a stud. You know, I think he's going to be stud in the league. A guy, I'm, I mean, I want to see where he's going. I, yeah, that's true too. Another guy I've been interested in, you know, watching video and stuff like that. Denny Avaja from Israel, a guy that's six nine, six ten. You know, you know, with the league going like, you know, more open space and stuff like that. Having a lot of combo fours and all that, a guy that can shoot, he fits in that mode. Like a Denaro Gallinari, Dario Saric, he's fits in that mode. Yeah, only nineteen, right? Yes, he's only nineteen. So yeah, that's another guy right there. James Wiseman. <sighs> I'm in question, man. <laughs> I don't think he's – go ahead, because I don't think he's going to be – I got to watch more of him as well, um, do more of my research on him. But to, to put him – he has a frame of a car in from your town to me. Does he see is – that, is that similar to you? Yeah, yeah, or, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, I, like 
I'm looking at his frame and I'm trying to compare him to the next big man. He's not really that thick. So he like like he he's kind of thin. Like, you know, you probably put a little bit, he's not even in the league, he's not gonna gain that much more weight. And gotta figure out more about his shooting range. Like, ah boy, I don't know. Now if he's tough, then okay, I think that plays a bigger part, but you know, that frame of the Carl Anthony Towns, to me, how often do you see that? Yeah. Like, yeah, you don't see that that often. Uh, for Wiseman, for me, uh, you know, I don't know, what do you think about this comp? I kind of like a, well, if Rasheed Wallace was, you know, well-tempered. Meaning, you know, he's not, you know, getting texts and stuff like that or, you yeah. know, not being crazy on that type of stuff. But, you know, play, you know, Comparing wise, Rasheed Wallace. Yeah, uh, that works. I mean, if you if you can you can say that I would I would say that Rasheed Wallace would work very well in this league, like today's league. Like, you know, we don't really see that many big big men like that in a league right now. Uh, but I think. My biggest, my biggest thing is, uh, I'm looking at the fact that he's not, he's not as muscular. You know, you need somebody down there because Joel Embiid is going to body, uh, Drum is going to go down there and body. These guys are going to get to the rim, and you know, get you know your big man in foul trouble. So, uh, he could work. Yeah, why he could work? It just, um. I'm used to, and I'm pretty sure you're used to because we're about around the same age. I'm used to seeing the big man grab all the boards and dish it out to other other players. You know what I'm saying? Like this league where we see a lot of big men taking these shots from three point land more than anything, um, it's a little different to me. I mean, I remember seeing Shaq. You know, when he was in Orlando, he used to dribble the ball down the court. But you know, after a while, he was strictly you know grabbing boards and putbacks and you know blocks and steals and stuff like that. You know, so that was the that's what we've seen often. Um, but maybe he does fit in this, you know, in this era. You know, I just feel like the the frame is what has to be built so we can see a different player. DeAndre Ayton is another player, but I think he's a little bit thicker as well. Like you can tell, he's a complete big man. Like you know, he doesn't really have too many different moves like that, but. Um, I just think that that frame uh, is very comparison to Carl Anthony Towns, and I said for a while that I thought Carl Anthony Towns was one of the better, you know, players in the league, and I stand to it. So, mm-hmm. why isn't it good, you know, be one of those studs? It's just we have to see. We haven't seen too much of him in college, which is what you don't really see, you know, in college basketball. Usually, the studs. What happens is we see them leave super early. So. They play what hell one year, and they're out. They're out already. So, you know, we usually see that. I remember seeing Nerlens Noel like, you know, for a while in college he, in Kentucky, he was supposed to be the man. And then next thing you know, he gets the NBA and he just disappears for a couple of years. And now he's kind of, you know, the player that he is now. So, I think Wiseman could be the guy. I think he could be a stud. But I think it's gonna take, you know, maybe a couple of years to see the actual Wiseman that he, you know the actual true player that he can be. Yeah. For Wiseman, I think, you know, you know, if he's right, if he's in the right spot to develop his offensive and defensive skills, you know, like I'll go throw another this name again, Golden State, then awesome. But anywhere else, I'm kind of skeptical on. 
So like you mentioned, you know, I, I hate how basketball is kind of turned into regarding big men. Because, I mean, you can teach a good big man to be have awesome footwork and score down low. But I think people have gotten, you know, real lazy with that, you know, teaching these big guys, especially, you know, coming through the AAU ranks and stuff like that, you know, just running, gunning, you know, you if you got a big man, you say, hey, you get rebounds and put back and start the fast break if you get the defensive rebound. That's it. No half-court offense, no slowing down, teaching these guys proper footwork and stuff like that, post moves, et cetera. I, 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 I hate that. But, you know, if you come in the right situation, you know, you can do runders and stuff like that. Yeah. But where does he, but where does he, how do I say, what kind of, what kind of team are you putting Wiseman around? Like what kind of, what kind of offer, like what kind of, kind of structure? Because um, this is, this is what we're, kind of figuring out right now with Carl Anthony Towns is now that they went and got D'Lo, how long has Carl Anthony Towns been in the league? Like, they're just now trying to find a structure for this type of player. Like, we clearly know that he's going to be a man on the team, but now you're putting this kind of structure around him. Like, they have a couple other, uh, I think they traded for a couple other big men. They're really deep at fours. And the Timberwolves right now, so it kind of seems as if they're going to lean on him to be the big guys, and you know, go big and go, you know, long everywhere else. Kind of seems like that, and then maybe have D'Lo play the one, like kind of, and, and have a lineup is what I'm trying to say. Where you know their point guard is D'Lo, and they're just long six five and high everywhere else, everywhere else. So, what kind of structure do you have for Wiseman? It's the same thing with Noel. Wasn't Noel like a true center in Kentucky? And then we were talking about, you know, a while back. He was a center in Kentucky. And then now he gets to the league and he's like, well, hell, you ain't no center. You're kind of like a – you're a center, but you're a backup center. You're, you're, playing the, you're playing the four. So what kind of structure is he going to is he gonna have? Are they going to put him – because it's the same thing with Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard was clearly the big man. What did they do? With the Magic, they have Rashard Lewis, Hottie Turkle, who are both above 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, around 6'7". Then they had um, Michael Peaches coming off the bench for defense with one small guard in, uh, in Jameer Nelson. So it was clear that, okay, we're going to put shoes around Dwight Howard. But with, with Wiseman, I, I don't see what structure they have him yet. I, well, I can't see it right now. Maybe... This is why I say we got to see how he develops, and then maybe we find that perfect structure for, for him. But I think that's what a team is going to have to figure out when you draft him. I mean, we're looking at a team that can possibly get him with the Charlotte Hornets. You got uh, PJ Washington over there, right? Yep. Um, Miles Bridges. Uh, we were talking about maybe they try to get Russ, but if not, you still got Terry Rozier. You got a couple other guys like. <sighs> Do you kind of mold him into what he is and then you build the structure around him? Because when you get a piece like this, maybe this doesn't fit for a P.J. Washington or or a Miles Bridges. So do you get rid of those pieces to rebuild that structure? Like, you know, those are the kind of questions that you got to have with, with him. Because the other guys, like, I guess it's easier for me to say with the other, other guys because they're guards and the forwards, right? Mm-hmm. But Wiseman can play the four. Wiseman can play the center. But his his frame still has to be built compared to the Anthony Edwards, who we know is going to be a guard, to Lamelo, who we know is going to shoot the skin off the ball. Yeah, and you know we'll and like you mentioned, we'll see. You know, if he can marry his game, I, I feel like a Dwight Howard. If he, I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. That'd be great. You know. I would hate to see him go in the New Orleans Noel route because I think Philly messed that up. Like they try to play him yeah. four, and then you know another big man 
that's kind of been ruined by today's game, Jaleel Okafor. Yep. A guy that has, like, back to the basket, can get you buckets down low, who being perfect to come in the league 20 years ago. You know, a guy, you know, who really got no burn because, you know, yeah, he can score down low, but, you know, everything else he really can't do too well. Now, that's, I think, in results of today's game, uh, Jaleel Okafor can't stick out. But if you got a half-court offense, slow it down for a little bit, you know, you can slow it down, maybe you could do some things with him. Well, but, you know, you brought him Noel real quick. We'll, we'll move on. But Noel, I don't think he was never that that type of dude in high school. Yeah, he was highly ranked and stuff like that, but I always saw him like, like a block shots, rebound type of dude and putbacks. I never saw him in anything else more than that, even in Kentucky. I never saw that. Yeah, you're right. You know. I guess it's a high expectation. Yeah, correct. I think, you know, I think he just got put in like a, well, come off the ACL, and then he was in like a, a crap situation in Philly, like I said, with Okafer and along with Embiid as well. And it just wasn't like a good mix at all for none of those guys, really. Until you know, until and B really stuck out from the rest of the bunch. Yeah, I mean it's, it's like I said. I, I think um, and then B even hell even with MB, MB we didn't see too much from MB the first couple of years, right? Yep. Then we and then he comes out and now he's just remember we were here and trust the process for so long and the mm-hmm. process finally came. This guy's like you know one of the better centers in the league, so. Does this happen with Wiseman? That's why I said that. Does this? I think that this is what we can see happen. What's the center? I cannot. I cannot believe I'm drawing a blank. His name, Anthony, that the cut the Cavs uh, drafted December a while back. Anthony. Tell me, Anthony. Go to, go to Bennett. Yes, Anthony Bennett. So, Anthony Bennett was about six ten, I believe. Well, I should six eight. Yeah, so he was around. Yeah, so he wasn't, but he was playing center, right? He was supposed to be the big man, and look how that turned out. So I like Wiseman, but I just want to see the structure. I think when it's twenty twenty, I think in about three years we're going to see um, a different player than what is projected uh, right now. Um, hell, I. Uh, sad to say for the Knicks fans, but poor Zingas. Like, you know, you had a dominant rough in poor Zingas. You know, if it wasn't for the injury, maybe he's still there. But look at him now. And he's still, you know, looking to improve. So, uh, I like Wiseman. I just, I guess it's a little bit hard. I'm waiting to see, like I said, I'm waiting to see the build that he, that he, he gets at one point. So, yeah, I agree with you. It's like a wait and see all these guys, really. And, you know, come this Wednesday, you know, we'll see where these guys land, you know, any big trades and stuff like that that happens, you know, throughout the draft and stuff like that. So Wednesday is going to be a must-see TV if you're an NBA fan. Yeah. And speaking of trade, D-Lock, the Lakers made a move today. They made a move sending their 28th pick overall in this year's draft, along with Danny Green, to the OKC Thunder. Now, some of y'all are probably thinking, like, well, damn, they traded for Chris Paul. No, not really. They traded for Dennis Schroeder. What do you think of the Lakers? Who who Going after Dennis Schroeder, who's what was going to be a hot commodity in the trade market. What do you think of them making this move to kind of shore up that corn car position? I think this means that Rondo is out of LA wearing purple and gold. Um mm-hmm. I really feel like it was a it was a really 
good movie. They did send Danny Green up there, right? Yeah, he did, they did. Yeah, so dude, we know what Danny Green did. We so many expectations with that 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 deal that he had. Um, but I think it was an excellent move. Um, now, even though I say that, I don't think this is it. I think they're still going to make you know other key uh, moves. I just feel like uh, getting Dennis Schroeder is going to take a lot more pressure off of having to have LeBron and AD score all the points or a majority of the points. I think that is that is going to uh, make it easier for them. Now, obviously, again, the running for six man, he already got second behind Tres or third or something like that. Yeah, second. Um, yeah, so this is a hell of a piece, bro. Like this now, now LeBron can take less minute. He can get more rest time with Schroeder on the court, in my opinion. Um, now I don't think they're done. Um, we did see that there are they were coming out talking about they want to get the rose in which we're still trying to figure out is that even possible. But I think that the fact that they went and got a hell of a player like this, for one, was like a brilliant idea. Um, I'm still trying to see how the hell did they even pull that off and what the hell was uh, OKC thinking. Um, but I like I really do. Um, and I think that this vote fits well with you know the AD and LeBron. It's not going to be a big three with these guys, but I do think that you know you take a player like this, um, he can change your whole, change your whole like lineup throughout the game, like big time. I, I think it's a great move. Like you know, we both in agreement with that twenty eighth pick with the Lakers. He, You'd be taking a guy that either will have a high ceiling down a road or can help you now. And for the Lakers, you know, you know, and credit to Rob Palenka, he looked around and said, okay, I may like some of these guys here on my draft board, but can I get something better than this before the 28th pick? And credit, credit to them. They found a guard in Dennis Schroeder. A guy that's, you know, in his prime of his career, you know, last year of his contract, a guy that, you know, whose game is very, very similar to Rondo's. If you really you look at it. Yeah. So I think you get a guy that's younger, like Rondo, but I think a little bit better score. And I think uh, it's a great move. You kind of leap ahead of the competition. Mm -hmm. You got somebody at that point guard position that, okay, you got the uh, boys from the Bay coming back healthy. So you got somebody that could D up Steph and whatnot. And make his life fail offensively and pick a roll situations with AD. Somebody, you know, you can contend with with the boys in Denver, in that backcourt, D Lo in uh, Minnesota, Devin Booker and Ricky, Ricky Rubio in um in Phoenix, Donovan Mitchell in um Utah, the boys in Portland, Lillard and McCollum. So this is a great move for the Lakers. Very great move. And you're not if if you went and trade for a Chris Paul, you not get you not taking all that salary back either. And you're not getting like a player in his mid thirties also. And I think we you know we talked about this maybe like a month ago. You you need some other pieces because you know AD hasn't been the most healthiest guy. Since coming to the league, I mean, he never played a full season yet. And, you know, you mentioned like LeBron, you know, he's not getting older. I mean, he's not getting younger. And getting Dennis Schroeder alleviates some of those point guard abilities away from LeBron. So, I think it's a great move. You got great value and you got rid of Dan Green that really kind of disappointed you this past season, especially in the playoffs. 
you know, and shed his salary. Uh, it's a win win for the Lakers. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is, you know, they're trying to, I think this is going to help them not only for next year, but even, you know, after LeBron is gone, you know, you got those two and the selling point of it being LA, obviously. And now you have two solid pieces in AD and Schroeder. So I like, um, it wasn't going to do anything with that pick anyway. And this is the reason why I said the same thing with the Warriors. Like I, it kind of goes off topic a little bit, but this is the reason why I can see the Warriors trading their, their top pick is because they're going to try to win now. On the Lakers, they got the 28th pick, even though it was a lot later than the Warriors. But they're trying to win right now. Like they're looking for the vet that's going to be there that's going that can come in. Uh, you know, not necessarily a 30 plus who's going to retire like the Lakers did when they went and got Carl Malone. You know. They're looking for they're probably gonna look for another uh you no know, vet to come in. And, you know, with the Lakers making that push, uh, I won't be surprised if we see, you know, these next couple days and hours of other teams making moves as well. And, you know, to kind of stay around Dennis Schroeder, there were reports that Milwaukee was trying to trade for him but was unsuccessful. And we know, yeah. and we know Milwaukee. I don't know. They trying to get make moves to make you know Giannis happy or whatnot. We that situation. You know that, yeah, you know. That, you that, know. that that situation is real weird. It's I don't say right now, yeah. It's it's up in the air right now. Yeah. We know Giannis. I mean, that situation is everywhere. But we know Giannis is a free agent after this pat after this season. We know, you know, if they run it again, they could be they'd be top two in the East. You know, I know Eric Bledsoe, you know, hasn't been hasn't really been the same for the past couple of years. Don't know why. I don't know. If you can upgrade your point guard position to a, a different player, hey, awesome. But, you know, if you can't offload this guy to get something better, then, you know, what else can you do? Yeah. I mean, because right now you, you know, <sighs> right now, see, this LeBron is, LeBron is, even though he's doing the, doing, you know, so well and, continuously chasing, grabbing titles, um, it's forcing all these other teams to chase, you know, what hit him and his team uh, and other teams as well, like the Warriors, they're going to come back on fire. Kevin Durant and Kyrie did not go to the, the Brooklyn just to say, well, we're getting ready for five years from now. Hell no. They want to win right now as well. So these teams, including Milwaukee, um, they're trying to, they're trying to chase or trying to put their team together now because we've seen LeBron say, hey, you know what? I try to get somebody from the Cleveland, didn't happen, I'm out. You know, we've seen that. We've seen that happen with Shaq in the Cleveland Orlando. So with that being said, um, mm-hmm. Giannis is what the back-to-back MVP. Well, now Milwaukee is like, well, hell, we don't want him just to leave. They don't sure don't want him to leave. So, you know, Let's try to make some moves to go and grab some pieces for him. And that's what that move trying to get Schroeder was. But the fact that the Lakers got him, um, that probably hurt what, uh, you know, the whole Giannis scenario and situation. So, you know, it's up in the air, but best believe, I'm pretty sure Giannis sees a, di- a lot of different teams where he can go and be in a better position as far as winning the title. Um, because remember, we see a lot of great players, but if you don't win a title, you consider it as a great as one of the greatest of all time. It's just like, you know, well, we can't put you in that category. You know, we were talking about they're talking about you know, Kevin Durant being one of the better players before he won a title, but he wasn't considered where he is now after he's won a couple of titles with Golden State, even though he we know he joined the Avengers team. But uh 
you know, because of him making that move, you can get all the stats and the records, but it's all about winning titles. So Giannis has you know, been to MVP two times in the league. He's been to, you know, deep in the playoffs. He's been to all-star games. You know, well, what else is for him? What else is he looking for? So, um, and we know that we've seen players do this, you know, multiple times. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get Schroeder is one reason they're trying to get Schroeder or we're trying to get him is to make that, hey, you know what? We're trying to get some players around you so you don't have to leave and we have a possible chance of winning the title here. Um, and they're going to continue to do that. So I don't think this is going to be the last time we hear anything from Milwaukee. The next three days, potentially four days, it's going to be real interesting in the NBA. It's going to be really interesting. You know, starting tomorrow, you know, that's when trades will be allowed to go through and whatnot. And a lot of things are on the table. We don't know the future of Giannis. You know, what will Golden State do with the second overall pick? Same thing with Minnesota. You know, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, what's going to happen with them? DeMar DeRozan. You know, that's another piece. Gordon Hayward. Do the Boston try to get rid of, you know, upload him for a big man? You know, what are your thoughts about Victor on Depot? Like, he, he seemed like he wants to go, but want, don't want to go. What are your thoughts on him being real hokey right now? I think he's trying to. I think he's trying to see if he has as many options as these other star players that have left in the past. Um, you know, if you hear that, just like James Harden, we hear that James Harden is what. Well, we can say, "Hell, let's just go to Russ because we know Russ is more likely out the door than James Harden." We know that almost every team is going to try to get Russ. The Clippers are trying to get him. You know, these teams are going to try to push for him. But Victor is trying to get that same kind of energy in return by saying, well, yeah, I want to play at this team or I will consider other spots. And that's not the case. He's a pretty decent player, but I don't think he's as good as, you know, he thinks he is. In my opinion, I think he's pretty solid. I just feel like, you know, it's kind of like he's announcing that, oh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm open to going anywhere else. And he's thinking, well, all these teams are going to line up and be like, oh, well, hell yeah, let's try to see if we can get him from Indiana. And that's not happening. So it's kind of like he's teeter-totter. And the only reason why you teeter-totter in that scenario is you're trying to explore your options and see who's really willing to come and get you. And we're not seeing too much of that now. This is from us, or even like we said from James Harden. James Harden said he doesn't mind going to Brooklyn. They really think that the only team that's going to try to get him is Brooklyn. There's no way. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other teams that's like, well, hell, if you consider going there, let's try to take a chance and see if he will come to us. I mean, I mean, it's worth a shot. He's James Hart. So I think Victor gotta 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 kinda just relax a little bit and just let 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 it come to him. Um to be honest, I don't think Indiana's a bad spot for him. I don't yeah. Indiana's not a bad spot for him, but it seems like it seems really weird. Like ever since his injury, you know, a season ago, it seemed like he wants out for whatever reason that may be. I don't know where that came from. But it's like ever since he had that injury to his, I think, his leg, he's just been kind of like, well, damn, I don't really don't want to be here. Which it seems kind of odd to me. If Indiana moves Owen Depot, he's kind of like that fallback option to some of these teams trying to add like a third guy. If I can't, you know, trade for Westbrook, James Harden, Bradley Bill, you know, uh, Giannis to a degree, depending on the situation. But you know, if I if I was them, I would be like, I 
Uh, I think I lost D lock there for a sec. I'm trying to get back on. But um, I finished my thoughts here, ladies and gentlemen. But he seemed like that fallback option for a lot of teams if they can't get a star player. That's how I, I see them. You know, and I, how I feel, feel about Victor on Depot. He's that fallback option in my eyes. So, if a team don't get like a Bradley Bill, um, eyes were removed to see how his other senses. I think I got back on now. You there? Hello. Well, I'm trying to get him back again. You there? Hello. Well, let me see what's going on with him. Um, and we'll probably get back on the show, but um, are you there? Here. But anyways, yes, that's what my thoughts on 50 on the depot. I'm trying to get D Law back on. But if he's not like the top option, he's the second best. You know, where will he end up if he gets traded? You know, Milwaukee sounds like a good destination. Trade him for Eric Bledsoe. That would be a good spot. If I was them, that had like more pieces there. New York, if you need like a, a player to, I don't know. You there? Yeah, can you hear me? I don't know what the heck is going on. So, well, I'm trying to get that resolved. I uh, know we went over a little bit tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if I can get it back. Hello? I don't know what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, but D, can you hear me? So, I know we went over late, uh,
Now, I know we can, um, I know we went over a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of news has dropped today. Test, test, test. Let me see if we get this. You there, D-Lock? Well. Well, I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, so I don't know what happened to the signal there. Um, maybe it's on my end and whatnot. Um Let's see. Let's see what's going on. So, sorry, you know, the show kind of <laughs> went away like that. And we're having like a good convo tonight, too. So, So yeah, so we'll end the show on that note. Um, are you there? Let's see. Yeah, I know. I understand, Terry. And, you know, we're deep in. You know, it, it happens. So, so it hates to go out like that because we have a couple other things to talk about. But thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, well, next time we'll be on, we'll be reviewing the NBA draft and whatnot. And then, you know, if any big news has happened throughout the week, you know, we'll talk about that as well. You know, the potential news of James Harden and Russell Westbrook potentially being moved. You know, what you know, what happens with Chris Paul, the draft, they draft draft day trades, all that stuff. So, you know, thank you for tuning in with us. And um we'll talk to y'all next week. Uh if y'all can, please do follow us on social media. Follow us on Twitter at Fastbreak. At I E S R, that is fast break I E S R. You'll see the logo for the uh, both of us, our names on it. Please do give us a follow. Also, please do follow uh, D Lock on social media. That's like uh, I think it's Black Dash One Three. Let me be sure on that. Let's see. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. We I <laughs> got you back. Oh my gosh. I don't know what happened there. I was trying to see if you get my. Are we still live right now? Yeah, we're still live right now. Say again? Yeah, we're still live. We're still live. Okay. I was. I was trying to. I was trying to see if I could get it working for a while. I had to turn my phone on and off. I don't know what was going on. So. So yeah. So uh, sorry about that, Lacey. I know a lot, a lot of dead air and stuff like that. So we apologize for that. But D Lock, I was kind of finishing up my thoughts on Owen Depot real quick. You know, he was that fallback option. If these other guys, like, if some of these teams don't get Russ or Harden, Bradley Bill, you know, 
th- those guys and th- that nature. Maybe Giannis throw him in there. He's that fallback option in my my eyes if he gets traded. If he does get traded, you know, a team like the Knicks will kind of like scoop him up. You have to give up too much for him. Charlotte seemed like another option. They need like a veteran score there. Miami sounds real sexy to a degree, but I would hate to give up my young pieces for a Victor Home Depot. Yeah. So for Home Depot, you know, if I was him, use a bonus, just be the dudes in Indiana and just try and get over the hump in my eyes. If I was y'all. <laughs> I mean, it seems like he's trying to go to a team to where he can just, I don't know. It, like, is he just trying to see his options? Because that's what it seems like to me. I guess so. But, I mean, if I'm there, made an all-star team in Indiana, I'm averaging 20 points. I finally found my groove after going to a couple other spots. And then, you know, I, you know, it is what it is. So I was like, you're a man there. You know, you got a good, you know, guy you can grow with and some bonus. So I was like, okay. Whatever. You know, the the article, you know, we read, you know, kind of weird that he's going while, you know, on the court saying, the guys, the various different teams, like trade for me and stuff like that. That seems kind of weird, but you know, I I don't see people kind of clamoring to get him. Exactly. But mm-hmm. I did want to get your thoughts on this, and we'll head out here, ladies and gentlemen. I know we've been kind of crazy here the past five minutes. Greg Marshall got fired from, well, not fired, but, you know, they're coming in terms to a buyout. What yeah. were your thoughts on that situation? I know we talked about last week, you know, with him being like King Tut around Wichita and stuff like that. But, you know, what the word is, you know, them working on a buyout and stuff like that. Do you see him get in get in every gig anytime soon. Uh he will because of his record. But it won't be at a big school. Um I don't think so. I think he'll go at a smaller school at first. It'll be like kind of a discreet or more so of a smaller school that he would go to. Um I think that resume that he ha- has or what he's done in the past at it is gonna is, at Wichita is gonna do more damage than help for him. Um, the word is gonna get out. Um, one thing I do know is they do when they come to hiring, they do ask questions. You know, their old jobs and try to figure out well, what is it about this guy, uh, the good things, the bad things, and that might be just something that just was too, just was too too bad to not get passed up. So, um, not as a problem. Like I said that they supposedly quote unquote decided to part ways but um, he'll get a job somewhere it just won't be a big name school at the moment for me he, he's he's like a person that became his own worst enemy a guy that got real comfortable where he's at was in a school that, you know, wasn't getting top five recruits. So, you know, you got, you don't got these kids, you know, coming here as top five recruits. And, you know, if things don't, if they don't like things, how things are going, they go and bounce, even to like a lesser conference, stuff like that. The kids he got now, he gets, you know, they are at a smaller conference. They are at a smaller school. And, and if they leave, is it right through Juco 
or like Division Two, or you find like another Division One program to take you in, that's hey, that'd be great. But for Marshall, for a guy that thinks he was King Tut around Rock, Wichita until the big boosters come in town, I, I don't know. And he was never a bit school type of guy. I mean, yeah, some programs may stick around to him. But I don't see like a power five conference taking a chance on him. Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, he probably, you know, con him say, you know, I've seen the error in my ways and stuff like that. But man, d Lock, this dude's like 50 plus years old. Yeah. You know, you're 50 plus years old. You are who you are. At this point, yeah, you're definitely not not changing who you are after that. That's like, you know, off top off topic a little bit, Ellen DeGeneres. You know, yeah. she's trying to say, Well, I'm sixty plus, I ain't know all this thing's going on. I'm gonna change to be a better human being. Hey, lady, you 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 you're sixty years old, you're you are who you are. If you're gonna act like the wicked witch of the West and cuss out your people, hey, it is what it is. Yeah. Same thing. Greg Marshall, same thing. You, if you want to beat up on your assistants and stuff like that, and DDT and all that, and threaten your players and stuff like that, hey, you, you are who you are. You know. You know. You know. It took a little while. It took a little while for Larry Eustace to get another gig. You know. For Marshall, for Marshall, I say he'd be out of the game for a year or so. But then my my prediction, he gets a power five job somewhere. I don't know where, but he gets a power five job somewhere. I hate to say that because he don't really deserve it, but you know. We know this. Some of these schools will, you know, turn a blind eye or like if an AD is desperate enough to try and get this basketball program right, they'll take a gamble on him and tell him, you know, what it is. Kind of like a Bruce Pearl. Because, you know, he was out of coaching for years until, you know, Auburn opened up. But yeah, I can see Marshall at a power five gig. If not, another mid major job, but I think one of these power five schools will take a gamble on him. I'll give you the final thoughts on that. I believe so. And I just think it's gonna take, you know, a little bit of time. I this is kind of rough. this is kind of recent um with these different allegations. So um like I we talked about, like I said last week, you know, the records can be fine, but, you know, it could be all good. But if you um, if you have this. This big deal of, you know, abuse and especially in college hanging over your head, it's going to be there for a while. So, um, like I said, at, yeah, at some point, the power five will get power five school will give them a chance. I just don't think right at the moment. And, uh, you know, we'll see what the future holds for him. And whatnot. I don't see him going to the NBA, my humble opinion, because those dudes wow. they they won't tolerate that. They might, you know, smack him side of the head if they try and yeah, stuff with him. Time. You know, you try and rub on Jimmy Butler or James Johnson or somebody, they probably put you on the ground. Latrell's pre will situation all over again. Oh yeah, well he probably well, in that case he probably have it come to him. <laughs> yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, this has been our show tonight. I know we went a little over tonight, but you know, we had a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. The draft is this Wednesday, so we had to get you know talk about that. The Houston Rocket news. The Lakers making moves. Everything else <laughs> seems like you know yeah. the NBA clock is continuing spinning. 
D Lock, how can the people find you on social media? You guys can definitely find me at Black Dash eight one three. A black the word dash eight one three. Um on Twitter and Instagram. We talk about different NBA stuff and different sports. So just like football, you know, other and college. So we'll get into a lot of different things, but it'll definitely be on my social media. Let them know where they can find you at, man. You can find me at the Crooks Process on Instagram and Facebook. That's the Crooks Process on Instagram and Facebook. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Spawn4288. That's on Twitter, Spawn4288. Uh, my latest episode I dropped on the Crooks Process is talking about the election and all that stuff. Talk about it in real time. I uh, may do another follow-up about the election here soon, so do look out for that. And like I said, tune in with us next week. I know we had a little you know, communication issues not uh, about five, well, 10 minutes ago, so thank you for bearing with us. But next week, draft review. Like I said, Monday, that's when trades open up in the NBA. So, God knows what's going to happen. I, D-Log, I just seen that Evan Fournier and Nicholas Platoon pick up their player options. So, you know, if trade's going to happen, those two guys' salary is going to count somewhere. Yeah. So, a lot, a lot of things going to happen this week. And we're going to bring out all the juice next Sunday. So please do follow us on Twitter at Fastbreak, I-E-S-R, and we'll see y'all next week. We out. Peace.